Hi everyone and welcome to our next lesson in our Basic Beginners FreeCAD course for FreeCAD version 1. Please note this is an updated video. The previous video was built on the pre-release which changed after it went live. This is to bring the video up to date. In this lesson we'll take a look at the basic preference settings you want to adjust before diving into the course. These will help make FreeCAD easier to use and also takes into account if you have a visual disability like myself or just want a cleaner, more readable interface. When we first open FreeCAD, we get the start screen and you'll see this welcome to FreeCAD. Now, if you've already delved into FreeCAD, just have a look about, you may not see this. We're going to go up to the top and go to edit and select preferences. Everything on the start screen is available from the preferences. Let's first start with the general preferences. So from here, you can set your language and the default unit size. In this course, we'll be using millimeters. While you're modeling, FreeCAD allows you to change in and out of the different unit systems quite easily. And this can be found in a drop down in the bottom right hand corner. We also have the number of decimal places, which we can increase to be more precise. I'm leaving it at two. There are three standard themes dark, light, and classic. I'm using FreeCAD out of the box, so I'll be using the classic, and it's down to your preference, so you may want to use the dark, depending on what's easier for the eyes. The layout will be still the same, it's just the colors. For this course, I'm increasing the toolbar icon size. I'm setting it to large. This is for my preference, because of my sight disability, and also it's easier to see on the demonstration. Next, let's have a look at the selection tab. And I want to draw your attention to the enable pre-selection and its color. And you'll find when you're using FreeCAD, you'll be moving over the faces. And when the mouse enters the face, it will flash onto that color, which as in all 3D programs, can be annoying if it's quite bright. This can be easily toned down by just clicking on the color and selecting a color that's less bright. Next, we'll look at the notification area. Now these are messages such as errors, informations, and warnings. By default, the enable non-intrusive notifications is set. Errors and messages will appear in a small pop-up down the bottom, which will disappear after a duration. And those can be set here. You may want to adjust the maximum number of notifications so that pop-up is reduced in size. You can see previous notifications by clicking on the icon in the tray. Hand in hand with the notifications is a report view. And we need to look at the output. You want to uncheck show report view on error. And any of the show report view or warnings or messages. If these are checked, a panel will appear with the notification within. And that can be quite annoying. The non-intrusive notifications solve that issue. And you can always show that report view straight from the UI. Instead, just rely on the small pop-up notifications in the corner towards the bottom in the status bar so you can click on it to get details. Next, we have the display. Under the 3D view tab, look for show coordinate system. This is related to the axis that is shown in the bottom right-hand corner. You can increase its size. For me, 20% normally works perfectly. It all depends on your screen size or personal preferences. Next, we have rendering, and within we have marker size. Now in the sketcher, this is quite useful because it sets the size of the points and vertices, making it easier to see. I'm going to set mine to 15. The camera type, we'll use the orthographical rendering. Now we'll come over to the sketcher and look at the display settings. We're looking for font size. This increases the font size of constraints and dimensions, as well as the constraint icons themselves. I'm setting mine to 24. Another setting that you may want to adjust, especially if you have a larger monitor, is the view scale ratio. I've got mine set to one. If we increase this, say to two, and apply, we see that the lines thicken in the sketcher. Reducing this to 0.5 and hitting apply, we can see that the lines are now thinner. So to make that geometry easy to see, 
just increase the scale ratio. Now there is another setting that you may want to change and that's in the part and part design and the shape appearance. Within here we have line width and vertex size. These can be increased to improve visibility. Just makes the geometry easy to see. There is one thing to watch out for. If we change the line width and the vertex size, then this is only applied to new geometry. If there is any existing geometry, we would have to modify it to add something like a new feature, or we need to come down to the tabs down the bottom, the view and data tab, making sure that the object is selected and we can change the line width from within and also the point size. Anything new, it will take the preferences by default. We have similar preferences on the sketcher and the appearance tab. And these apply to the sketch geometry. One more useful setting, if we go to general and come down to selection, we'll see the pick radius. By increasing this, this helps you select edges and points more easily. Just don't go too high or you might accidentally select the wrong thing when working in tight areas. Just keep in mind that changing these settings might shift your toolbars around and move icons into drop downs or into a new toolbar. And we'll cover that in our next video where we'll start to look at the UI and organize your workspace, setting it up for the course. Hope you enjoyed that video and look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.